Hello, welcome to Neil Shaw Physics. This video is a part two on how to use the Lagrangian mechanics to find the equations of motion for a compound Atwood machine. If you haven't watched the previous video, I recommend you do so. The link is in the description. We ended off last video with these two equations. These two equations just have two variables which means that we can solve them to solve for each coordinate. And after we solve for the coordinates, we can then use that to find the equations of motion for each mass. So firstly, we're going to look at the second equation. That seems the easiest to isolate a, var a variable. We could isolate x double dot and then plug that back into the first equation. A lot of the distributing can be done pretty much in your head and then factoring it can also be done pretty easily so I'm just going to do that so the left side of the second equation stays the same but then we want to factor out an x double dot and y double dot so what's multiplied by x double dot there's m1 and a negative m2 and then for y double dot there's an m1 and a and then an m2 and this is the exact same equation as the second one it's just rearranged a bit from here, it's pretty easy to isolate x double dot. All you have to do is subtract uh, y dot times m1 plus m2 on both sides, and then divide both sides by m1 minus m2, and you will get this. So now that we have x dot in terms of y dot, we can copy the first equation. I'm just going to put that a little bit lower. And then we can start using that in this equation. So right now, x double dot is pretty lengthy and messy. So what we're going to do with this equation is the same thing we did with the previous one. We're going to factor out an x double dot for the terms where it could be factored and a y double dot for the terms that it could be factored as well. So doing that, the left side is exactly the same. Then on the right side, you look at what's being multiplied by each thing. So for x double dot, you can see that it's multiplied by m1, m2, and m3. So then you can just write out that part as x double dot times m1 plus m2 plus m3. Then you look at y double dot. As you can see, it's multiplied by an m1, it's multiplied by a negative m2, and that is it. So you can rewrite that part as y double dot times m1 minus m2. So now we're going to have to do a lot of algebra. So I'm just going to rewrite this equation again, but then this time replace the x double dot with the equation we have at the top of the screen. So I'm just going to select that, and then I can select the rest of the equation and put that right there. Now to make it easier to eventually factor out the y double dot from the entire right side, I can distribute the mess on the right side of the equation. So first thing I could do is distribute the m1 plus m2 plus m3 divided by m1 minus m2 on both of those terms. You notice we have the m2 minus m1 divided by m1 minus m2, which is equal to negative 1. So when you distribute the right side, you will get a negative g times m1 plus m2 plus m3, and then all that minus y double dot times this whole thing, which is a lot. And then after that, you just add in the same thing from the previous line. Next, look at the first term on the right side of the equation. You'll see it looks a lot like the term on the left side of the equation, except that there is a little bit change in sign. So if you add g times m1 plus m2 plus m3 on both sides of the equation, a lot of 
canceling happens and all you're left with is 2m3g. So the whole goal of this part is to isolate y double dot. So I have to factor it out and then I'm left with a pretty big expression. Then to make things easier, you want to make that into one big fraction so it's easy to divide on both sides. That entire process would take too long for this video, so I'm just going to show what happens after you do that. Next, I'm just going to divide both sides by that fraction on the right, and then I will rewrite it a bit just to make it a little bit nicer. If you want, you can check this. Uh, it's equal to the equation above. So here is the equation for y double dot in terms of just g in each of the m's. Now we need to do the same thing with x double dot. So we have x double dot up here, but that's also in terms of y double dot. So I'm just going to copy that and put that down here. And again, like before, I could show out exactly how I substituted y double dot into this equation and then simplified everything, but then that would just make the video too long. So it did take me two steps to get it to the fully simplified version, and I'm just going to show those two steps. And my final equation for x double dot looks like this. However, having the equations for x double dot and y double dot is not the final step. Ideally, we want to be able to find the equations of motion for each mass. So I'm going to start out with mass 3. So that was the uh, biggest one, if you don't remember, and it was the one on its own side of the large pulley. The position of this mass is just the x-coordinate. So this makes it really easy. I just have to write the acceleration of mass 3 is equal to x double dot, and that is just equal to what I have directly above it. And next is the acceleration of mass 2, which is equal to x double dot minus y double dot. x double dot is right above and y double dot is somewhere a little bit higher. You could rewind if you really want to see it, but basically I just subtracted the two and then simplified it. And here is the end result after I simplified it. Lastly, we just need to find the acceleration of mass 1 which is going to be equal to, uh, sorry, x double dot plus y double dot. And again, like before, I just added them together and then simplified it. And here is the final result of that. And this is it. This is the conclusion to this two-part video. We have arrived at the accelerations of all three masses. If you really wanted a, uh, an equation for the position of each mass, you would just take the integral with respect to time twice, and then you would have to plug in the constants of integration, which you would get from the initial conditions of the system. Also, just in case you forgot which mass is which, I have the diagram of the compound Atwood machine right here. This is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching. 
Next video will be on how to use Lagrangian mechanics to find the equations of motion for an object sliding down a ramp which has the function which has an exponential function. So specifically y is equal to e to the negative x power. So don't forget to watch that. I will see you next time on Neil Shaw Physics. Bye.